okay so uh, i think uh, yesterday when i was doing discussing this thing there was a problem actually that uh, there was a confusion because i was directly trying to use the notes i understood it but i think lot of you were not able to understand so i have essentially now create kind of slides so all of you can easily see it and understand it i still i can't actually draw or write something okay <laughs> so we have to essentially bear with that uh, i will try to explain but uh, i will still not be able to reach till proxy root uh, concept in this case uh, that i will be doing in actually lecture next time so whenever i will prepare the slides further set of slides once they are ready the again i will announce okay so but uh, uh, while doing these slides i came up with another idea which is nothing but extension of the spillover okay that the spillover essentially has now been polished in a way and then i will be just discussing that so uh, you what you have to do is uh, all of you must be seeing a marker actually moving around okay so there is a cross here on the screen so that what i am going to use to essentially move around so you have to consider a dst network of storage service providers basically i am talking about a storage dst concept actually can be used anywhere okay concept is general but currently it is in terms of the storage service in fact when i am describing i am not mentioning that it's about a storage service it's about uh, how to handle shortage of space at a node so it cannot hold on to the key value pairs which it is supposed to hold so now you consider a node x and it is supposed to now push a fragment f and this actually goes through a dst root uh, through dst routing and it is supposed to be held at root node so root node will actually have a database which you can see i am actually showing with my pointer so it normally there will be an uri and there will be corresponding the complete fragment byte sequence will be stored there and this uri will typically will look like uh dfs colon slash slash email whatever is directory structure slash uh whatever is that uh fragment name it most likely will be file name colon fragment number or something which will be there okay and so now the problem which we have in our in hand is that r is short of the storage space so how to handle this particular scenario okay this r is short of storage space that's the problem with us we have to resolve that so we have to essentially figure out some way that there has to be some other node where the storage is available and we should be able to use that storage now question is who will find out this so there are two ways of handling it either the guy who is actually uh, who is the source who is actually pushing the file to the dfs storage he finds out the alternative this i had discussed earlier that he can have copy 1 copy 2 copy 3 and then he pushes three copies to three different routes but the question is i don't want to solve it that way some route may not be able to even uh, if this is not having the space you may be thinking you have stored it there but it may not have been stored there actually so this will create a problem so we have to so essentially uh, one of the assertion one of the conclusion which you can derive is that root node essentially has to figure it out it's his responsibility so one way of handling it initially i thought uh, it will be for called called of course is a, a very good solution because uh, when you are a root node for some particular entry the closest any node which is closest to you automatically will be the second backup root node for the entry okay so which is interesting but in other kind of dhts this may not be true so but uh, i am actually making it still very generic it is not nothing to do that is only going to be with the cord but cord it's actually simpler to handle but i can we can still handle with this but i have come up with a concept where the query packet will be can be routed through dht and when it reaches to its own root node after that it can be routed through spillover routing so we will have two routing tables one is which is basically a dst routing table and second will be spillover routing table now this is a interesting concept which i am introducing now so the root essentially will be uh, a very simple and common sense logic which i can derive is that root need should select the closest node and should pass on this key value pairs to it 
but now this root node should actually keep track of uh, that uh, how many nodes or uh, uh, should keep track of which what all key, keys key range it basically is responsible for certain key range for which the entry should be with him yeah umesh please sir um, what is key range because uh, we know that what is key value pair but what is key range here so how we are deciding this range factor okay now if you look at uh, all nodes which are participating in dht network okay so every okay. No, every uh, node will be responsible for holding certain uh, key value pairs so this is a key range for which this guy is responsible for holding, holding for storing the key value pairs that key range that's what we call key range okay so okay, if sir. you find out what's what's all possible values of keys for which this node is responsible is the key range for this node okay okay now this has to be broken down i most in want to speak yes Mohsen, you are. Uh, how should I go ahead? Okay, uh, let me go ahead. If uh, Mohsen, uh, if anybody wants to actually intervene, just please raise your hand, and then we can go ahead with this. Okay, so. this is what we call key range so what will happen is whatever key range for which a node is responsible it will select a closest node and this key range for which a node is responsible will essentially will be now partitioned some part it will it is still responsible for everything but it will now keep a track for these particular uh, part of the range i have the entries in my database for the remaining range, the entry has to be with the next node node which is closest to me next node right okay so that's the idea so in this case for example originally the r this root node is going to supposed to hold all the values uh, i think all of you should mute the microphone when you want to speak then you unmute it okay and i think please turn off all your videos that unnecessarily consumes bandwidth you will not get the clarity so look at this root node r it is supposed to now maintain originally 40 to 60 okay that's a hash ids for which this is responsible for holding on to the values now r1 is the next closest node to r so suddenly it finds out that now i am i am short of space so what to do in that case it will create a spillover table it says 40 to 48 i am going to keep with myself 49 to 60 it has go to r1 now here i am actually specifically marking this value r1 later on we need not even keep this actually because there is always somebody who is going to be closest to this guy and when you look at who is going to be closest to r1 certainly this cannot be r in cord typically this happens cord is asymmetric system so that's why cord actually it is going to work without any issue okay so now in this case 49 to 60 is here so now when it goes to r1 r1 whatever was the range for which r1 is responsible is to self and this entry need not be kept but what it will what it will keep it, all the key value pairs uh, for uh, uh, for all the keys whose hash id is in this range say 49 to 60 okay so this 49 to 60 key value database this will be maintaining all this database if you don't have any entry here this entry does not for example you are searching for some entry whose hash is 50 so it reaches to r because r is where it's going to converge ultimately it parts so passes on on to r1 r1 will actually search into its database will find out the entry does not exist it will simply respond back to the uh, node who is actually initiating the query that this entry does not exist so entry actually is not there that is being guaranteed in this case and of course the shortage of space has been handled but let's see what more problems we will get into this 
Now, question is why? Why I should assume that when query comes to R, R is short of space, then R one will never get short of space. R one can also get get short of space. So, what has to be done here? So, if R one storage will become full, it will find another closest node, which is R two. Okay, and of course, if it is cord, R will not be its the closest node, surely. So, it's the asymmetric distances which we are using. So, let's assume for the time being cord. Uh, we will come back to this issue if the cord is not there. We have symmetric distances. How to do it? Okay. So this is spillover mechanism works beautifully for cord. Actually, certainly it should work. So let's go to the next one. So now remember, all everybody is now maintaining a certain database. It is mandatory that everybody has to maintain a backup. Okay. so this uh, remember the resilience the backup part uh, so that if the node node actually goes off and comes back again i have done earlier uh, i have given it in the notes probably i had, i am not sure whether i have discussed in the class or not okay uh, but maybe i can discuss it if it is required you just let me know in that case i have to just just prepare the slides and then do with that So normally, idea is that all key-value database, for example, RI, whatever database is there, it will simply replicate to RI plus one. This is a backup. This backup will keep on monitoring RI. Whenever this RI dies off, okay, this guy will essentially now republishes every. Anyway, it has to republish after a set. It will republish everything, whatever is backup. So if the timer expires, it will also purge the entry. So RI has to keep on replenishing the entry, or at least telling them reset the timer. Normally, entries will not be transferred. The timer reset signal has to be given to everybody. Okay. So RI plus one is closest to RI. Okay. And if suppose this RI dies off, then RI plus one will become closest node to. Ri minus one, so Ri min minus one secure database will be copied onto Ri plus one, and Ri plus one start monitoring Ri minus one, and this everything will essentially will again be republished. Okay, that's how essentially backup will be maintained. I am not maintaining now those five backup thing. This I have mentioned earlier, I think in the class also. So this will keep on happening. There are lot of things happening parallelly. Now when queries will start coming to Ri plus one. what it can guess in a cord system ri plus 1 naturally will become the root node if ri dies off so the queries will essentially start coming to it the moment it the queries will start coming to it it will start creating backup on its closest node which will be ri plus 2 okay or alternatively it can monitor both methods can be done so i have told you about monitoring also this particular method can be used but i will still prefer this monitoring thing Okay, but there is only one node for whom you are becoming a backup. That's why it is simpler. You don't should not monitor multiple thousands of nodes. That's going to be very difficult actually. So now what we do is, uh, I came up with the spillover mechanism, uh, which we had. This is basically spillover. So. i can write down this if a storage is short is spill over to the closest node is done that's a rule which you keep so when you are running short of space what is whichever the closest node you spill over to him if he is going to run short of it he will spill over to his next neighbor so whenever a query will come it will figure out it will first of all check whether the key is there in the database or not if it can't find out in that it will look into spill over table if the key which you are searching is in the range for which spillover table actually either has r1 entry see in the earlier slide i had kept this as r1 entry now i am going to even modify this okay because there is only one closest node uh, sir one doubt yeah uh, sir uh, uh, hello am i audible uh, yeah yeah you are i am you are audible सर यू जस्ट सेट कि आर आई प्लस वन विल पब्लिश ऑल द ऑल द डाटा बेस इन टू आर आई प्लस टू ओनली वेन द क्वेरी विल बी कमिंग टू आर आई प्लस वन सो इफ द क्वेरी द क्वेरी डज नॉट कम एनी वे दी एंट्री बिफोर एक्सपायरी देर इज ए रीपब्लिशिंग विच इज डन 
okay every entry in this uh, network there is a timer either timer has to be reset for the database or if the time okay. entry expires before that then it has to be republish it will find out its own new root node and okay. then it will create the backup actually okay see that anyway has to be done because new nodes might enter into the system and they may become responsible node for that key revalue okay so periodically anyway all entries need to be published okay sir this is only when node exists the backup will be useful when new node comes in due to republish process they will automatically go to the right place hmm okay sir okay this is like doing routing so because it cannot do any further routing that's why it became responsible node or root node the moment there is a new node coming to whom it can be routed because there is a local routing table chain it has to be given to it so that's how every okay. entry should actually keep on moving to its routing uh, root node which will keep on changing dynamically depending on nodes arrival and departures okay 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 so now there is a spillover table because of which it will look into spillover table it finds out if there is no entry in the spillover table it means the entry does not exist you say the entry does not exist if the spillover table says that it has to go to somebody like r1 you will hand over the query to r1 in that case okay so this is what you say if entry is there in the spillover table hand over to the node id listed in the table but i can actually remove the even this node id for the cord thing so that's an improvisation so for the range you just keep the ranges for which spillover is yes so if for a, if, if if the range is not mentioned here it you have to search in your own local database figure out if the entry exist if it exists you give the response back if it does not exist you say it is not existing but if there is a range available and database does not have anything you go to that range and you have to do find out your next node which is the node which is closer to you closest node now so far whatever i am telling is only for cord kind of structure which is a symmetric system symmetric this becomes tricky because you might might be closer to somebody else you did a spill over but then if he is not having a space you are closest to him so he can't spill over back to you okay so cord it becomes operational i have to still come up with that other stuff so what we will do is now that there will be two routing tables so query will be dht routed till the root node and thereafter query has to be spill over routed when there is no entry in the spill over table there is no further routing you have reached your destination if you can't find anything there there is nothing which exist okay or it's like if you reach there then you will simply push in your entries there this is you can call it as a proxy route actually the guy who is responsible for that key range that's a proxy route so proxy route here because of spill over will be one of these depending on the how the spill over is happening so spill over entries will actually decide who is going to be responsible so set of spill over distributed spill over entries so this is also kind of a proxy route only so i am now giving up an example for example you have r here root node so first is there is a query which comes which is for publication it says 5760 so i have published 58 entry 58 is the hash value okay and this is spill over table so it comes here 57 to 60 can not be published here because that's a spill over which has to happen to r1 so publish will come so i will to now move this k1 and mango for example key and value pair and for the hash of this k1 is 58 so i will hand it over to r1 so there is no space at r1 okay so r will make an uh, sorry this is going to happen uh, this happens first when the entry comes for publishing sorry sorry the entry comes there is no space at r r will now find out that there is no space i have to move some entry so it will decide on a range 57 to 60 and it will end, make that entry in the spillover table and will pass on this publish query to r1 okay and it has to tell now that it is now being routed through spill over so r1 if it has a space it will simply store it that key value entry and set up a timer if it also does not have a space it has to do the same thing it has to make an entry in its spill over table and forward to the next closer node 
now this is only for chord okay for the symmetric ones i will do later on so if r1 is also short of space it will pass on to r2 r2 have stored it it was not short of space so it does not need not put this entry in the spillover table now this entry 57 to 60 has been put at two places in the spillover table now see if there is k2 k2 is the another uh, key for which you are searching its hash is 59 so it comes it will come to r actually it will through dst routing and then it will start doing from here the spillover routing now after this so it will figure out there is a entry in spillover 57 to 60 it will pass it on to r1 r1 will figure out it is again there is a entry in the spillover entry it will again push to r2 r2 does not have anything in the spillover entry it will search into database entry does not exist it will simply tell to the source that uh, there is no entry okay if it is a publish entry it will create an entry here okay that's what actually has been done so r1 has been created here this is for k2 which i was talking about so r2 does not have the hash k2 in the spillover table there is no entry in database it will simply say sorry there is no entry actually for this uh you have to understand that again which i have told verbally that all key value pairs are periodically republished by everybody there is a timer associated when the timer expires they have to be republished and goes back to the root the root node might have changed and it might redistribute because the hash ranges might have changed actually spillover ranges might have been adjusted by him depending on the current scenario of the storage okay so the range in the spillover table will keep on updating continuously because of this and all entries in the spillover table has to have expiry time okay and it has to be larger than the republish time of key value database okay so that's very important so with that i end i think today's discussion so if you have any query i will keep all these sessions brief actually uh, need not make it very long it becomes otherwise boring but we can have more sessions so i will again prepare more slides on uh, when the uh, symmetric systems are there and then we will talk about uh, the proxy routes okay uh, which the other method is this is also technically like a proxy route only but this is spillover so there it the method is slightly different and then we have to move to over to a reputation system which we have been thinking of how to implement this in the system so any questions from your side so or you can write down if you have any queries in the chat hello uh, yeah. this uh, uh, this thing is understood uh, about uh, how will be how will the root node decide on uh, the range of spillover sir yeah that's an interesting question i have not thought about it so maybe you, you see the thumb uh, there is a thumb rule is that you have to always keep some free space with you for emergency and contingencies okay you uh, should not deciding when the whole space is consumed the moment you reach uh, say, 70% you do a spillover okay uh, so you mean to say that any node which is there any root node uh, hmm. as soon as it reaches a threshold value decided hmm. by the system uh it starts maintaining a spillover value uh, spillover it's like table. it's like you have a space it reaches 80% you reduce your space consumption to 60% so 20% of your values because they are in order plus the new value has to be pushed as a spillover so everybody will keep on doing it okay. but this is only possible in chord actually not in uh, asymmetric uh, that, that i understood but for chord it is actually uh, good system uh, because then this uh, this proxy root thing uh, it will keep on diverting the data is correct this is the only doubt which i had because uh, i didn't understand when will the spillover table be start and maintain yeah that i have not mentioned probably i should have done that i have not thought about it i will note it down theek okay. hai yeah somebody also has recorded this session so he can share that mp4 file with everybody in the group okay so that will be great so thank you very much Umesh I think you have done the recording na Umesh or Rahul I think one of the persons Hello 
Hello. Yes, sir. I have done the. Yeah, please kindly share it in the group. Okay. Okay. Thank sir. you. Thank you very much.